Requires a lot of uh, tasting, which is a tough job. That's my story, yeah, everybody do. Coming back around with the zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, that's my story, yeah, everybody do. Coming back around with the zoom, zoom, zoom. Red light, red light, green light, go. Everybody know that we run the show. Yeah, we totally yeah. in love with yeah. my babe. Yeah, turn up, turn up on the wall. Everybody feeling that we got that flow. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, we. Yeah. A wise man once said, started from the bottom. Now we're here. The entire family, led by Alan, has played an integral part in creating Silver Belly. And that is two champions. May we know them and may we beat them. Fast, not slow, yeah, everybody's home. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Troy Clark and I'm here today to welcome you to WSWA's Brand Battle Tournament. This is the alcohol industry's premier pitch competition. All month, we're here Tuesday and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where you will see and hear from some of the industry's hottest wine and spirits brands battling it out category by category to compete in the 2023 Brand Battle Championship. This year's championship battle will be held in person for the first time in four years on stage at Access Live in April. With the who's who from the industry in attendance, a panel of expert judges will crown the 2023 Brand Battle Champion. Winners of previous brand battles have earned distribution partnerships and become some of the hottest brands in the US wine and spirits marketplace. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am the founder and co-owner of 1224 Cocktails and the corporate director of mixology and spirits education for the Martinetti companies. I've been in the restaurant and hospitality industry for over 25 years with companies like Senesta Collection, the Ritz Carlton, Starwood, and Marcus Hotels and Resorts. My passion for the beverage industry began many years working in restaurants, serving people across the country, and I'm driven to keep learning and share my knowledge as a certified specialist of spirits with the Society of Wine Educators, a certified sake professional, and certified sommelier. As a mixologist, I most recently won WSWA's 2019 Iron Mixology Competition and 2018 Call for Cocktails and Best Aperitif. I also love helping establishments with cocktail and bar design as I'm the lead expert bar designer for Crown Metal Corporation. Some of my most recent bar designs can be found at Citizen Crust at Gillette Stadium, Neroli in Westwood, Massachusetts, and the ENG Gallo Training Facility in California. I'm thrilled to be your host today for the RTD Hard Seltzer Category Competition. Brand Battle is a terrific opportunity to see, hear, and taste new brands on the forefront of growth and opportunity. Today, you'll be hearing from five different companies who will spend a few minutes each presenting information about their products. After each presentation, the judges will have a few minutes to ask questions and provide feedback. I encourage all of you watching to add your own questions and thoughts in the chat box at the bottom of the screen. We will try to answer all of your questions that come through during the tournament. At the end of today's competition, we will announce our category winner from our judges' votes. The winner of today's tournament We'll move on to the championship brand battle live on stage in Orlando on April 3rd. Thank you to all to our brand tournament title sponsor, the Acceleration Group, TAG. Okay, let's get to it. I'd like to start off our competition by in introducing the esteemed panel of judges that we have with us today. Together, this group of wholesalers and retailers represent businesses varying in size from across the country and bring over 100 years of combined experience and expertise in the wine and spirits industry. These industry leaders are always looking for the next up and coming brand. First up, welcome our retailer judge, Catherine Jester. A trained chef and sommelier, Catherine works for the nation's largest grocery retailer, Kroger, as an adult beverage consultant and buyer. At Kroger, Catherine works with suppliers and vendors, partners, to increase brand awareness, 
promote innovation and provide consumer education. Welcome, Catherine. Next up, we are lucky to have Simone Bianconcini from RNDC. Simone is the Vice President of the Artisan Group, also known as TAG. Simone has been with RNDC for 25 years, where he began as a sales analyst and eventually worked in operations and other leadership roles, including area manager for the Gallo division and division manager for the Brown Forming division. Most recently, he was the vice president of sales in Kentucky. Simone's charge at the Artisan Group is to take RNDC's current best practices, best business practices across the country to create a consistent craft spirits portfolio strategy that is easy to navigate. Welcome. Thank Joining you. us from Nashville, Ryan Moses is the Chief Operating Officer at Best Brands Incorporated, a wholesale beverage alcohol distribution and import company. He currently serves on the board of WSWA, where he chairs the Finance Committee and is the past president of the Council for Leadership Development. Thank you for being here, Ryan. Next, we are fortunate to be joined by Jenna Ope from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Jenna has spent 14 years in the industry launching her career with Premier Beverage Company before moving to Breakthrough Beverage Group. Jenna is the National Sales Director of Emerging Beverages at Breakthrough's Trident Division, where she leads the network's new and emerging brands, vetting, hunting, and potential market expansion opportunities. Welcome, Jenna. Joining us from Boston, we have Nick Demian, who has been in the alcohol beverage industry in Massachusetts for 20 years. Nick is the director of Origin Beverage, a sales and marketing subsidiary of Horizon Beverage Group and manages the brands within Origin Beverage while overseeing a sales team that covers the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Nick got his start in retail side of the business, working for 10 years at Bauer Wine and Spirits on Newbury Street in Boston's historic Back Bay. Welcome, Nick. And from Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits, we have Luis Zweig, Senior Vice President, Commercial Operations, where along with corporately managing key supplier relationships, he also nationally leads the company's new supplier process. Luis has held senior management roles in the beverage industry for more than 35 years. Prior to joining Glazers, Luis held national and regional sales and marketing roles with Diageo, United Distillers, Shenley, and Renfield. Thank you for joining us, Luis. Thank you to everyone for participating as judges for today's competition and I look forward to hearing your feedback for the contenders and their products. Now let's get to the part you've all registered to see, our contenders. Today, we are excited to hear from five unique companies who were selected to talk about their products, representing a wide variety of new brands. The brands we will hear from today are Tigo, Dewey Juice, Natty Crush, The Red Lady Rum Punch, and Agua Dolce Ranch Water. Now that we know the players, let's get started. Please welcome our first contender of this tournament, Jeff Harris. Jeff is a serial entrepreneur and the founder of Tigo. He founded the company in the search of a canned cocktail with a base spirit that could be easily in a bottle or as in a can. At the start of COVID, he was forced to close his brick and mortar retail business in New York and moved to Florida where over a nightly tequila and soda, he wondered why no one had made an RTD for real tequila drinkers. Curiosity turned into a two month move to Mexico where he learned Spanish and built Tigo from the ground up. Take it away, Jeff. Oh man, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have written so much. <laughs> kind of took away all my fire. Um, but yes, I'm Jeff Harris, a uh, serial entrepreneur out of Florida. Uh, I represent Tigo Tequila Soda. We're based in Florida and Guadalajara. Um, so Tigo is the first canned cocktail made with 100% blue agave reposado, fresh squeezed fruit juice, uh, and sparkling water. It was a humble beginning story. So I had a retail store. We were based in New York. Uh, COVID happened. So like most people in New York, when COVID occurred, I went to Florida to lick my wounds. So I'm sitting there. Retail is shot in New York. Um, I've always been a Spindrift drinker. If you guys don't know Spindrift, it's uh, sparkling water with fresh fruit juice. Uh, and they really upended the sparkling water market. And so my nightly drink was either a can of the raspberry lime mixed with a shot of Tapatio, which is my favorite Mexican tequila, or like a Herradura Reposada. And I was sitting there drinking and being the curious alcoholic that I am, I said, 
you know, why hasn't anyone done this? Everyone's doing the same thing. They're importing mixed dough tequilas. At the time, this was kind of at the beginning of tequila seltzer, but everyone's using mixed doughs. Everyone's using natural flavors. Like I can make a better juice. Mind you, at the time, I knew nothing about uh, canned cocktails. I knew nothing about alcohol. I knew nothing. I didn't speak Spanish. So um, curiosity got the best of me. Like all relationships are good relationships these days. Um, I met a group on the internet. Uh, who later became our Mexican team, flew down to Guadalajara, uh, immediately realized no one spoke English. So that was my feet in the fire. Uh, for two months, I lived down there. And the first thing we wanted to do, because I am a tequila drinker, was make a good tequila. And I think that's the issue with the entire canned space, is people don't start with an alcohol that they actually like. So I made a really smooth reposado. It's nine, month, nine months aged, American oak barrels. Um, it's just something you would enjoy sipping as well as making a drink out of. So the next step was we had to make a drink. So to kind of build a picture, it's me, it's four other members of what later became our Mexican team. It's like a shrunken minivan, which you don't find in the US, but you find in Mexico. And we toured around from north to south because from a climate standpoint, um, Mexico actually produces every fruit that you would use in a cocktail. Fast forward about six months later, going through all the CRT uh, submissions, going through TTB, uh, going through everything production. Uh, we had our first landing of Tigo. Since then, we've been picked up by RNDC in Michigan. Uh, we're self-distributed through Greystone in Florida, and we're working with LNJ in New York. Um, it's been a really warm reception. I mean, you're for a tequila drinker. Um, this is something that I loved and obviously like industry statistics back it up. Things are going ultra premium. Um, and like you're seeing a bifurcation similar to you saw in the beer market when all the craft beers came out. So if you trace that as a lineage of how things evolve, that's really where we're headed towards. Our goal is to be the number one imported tequila soda. And it's something similar to if you look back and say, how did Heineken come to America? taste what they're drinking in Germany. Heineken's a Finnish company. That's a little bit ironic, but Americans didn't catch on and that's how they brought it to market. So while we see it as a crowded space, no one's attacking the international side of it. And that's where we leave, but that's where we stay. We're targeting the global, the global aspirational traveler. We're targeting kind of that new millennium of like global citizen. And we're doing that in the international capacity. So for Tigo, we're not the, we take pictures with the cans on the beach and that's it, you know? And then we hope it sells through at the stores. Like what you'll see is a, a small brand who's acting on a global scale and we're able to do that because we just have a sophisticated team in place who can back that up. Um, I'm gonna pause there. That's the, I guess I was going for 60 seconds. You guys kind of got the 90 second story, but uh, I'll open it up to questions. Well, thanks Jeff. Now let's bring it back to our panel of judges for some Q&A. Uh, we'll start with Louis Zweig from Southern Glazers. Louis, what are your questions or thoughts? Thanks, Troy. Um, so the 21st biggest brand in, this, in, in the RTD category is spending $8 million a year with Barstool. Uh, mm -hmm. to it's tequila RTDs out there. Uh, so t tell us a little bit about what you have in mind from a marketing standpoint. Yeah, for sure. So, and that's, that's nothing new in, in alcohol, right? People are going to spend and they spend through other channels that doesn't really get you an organic following. So for us, like, you know, I can't go out there and say my, my dollars as valuable as theirs because they have more of them. So we're owning all of our own media. So we're owning all of our own event production. We're owning everything internationally. So it, you do start building this, uh, this 360 cycle where you have, people are following because of the things you're doing and they're brand led. It's not saying we drink this because Dave Portnoy drinks this, which is an effective strategy, but shouldn't just be replicated because it's been done. You actually build an authenticity around this is the lifestyle that we're living. And these are the things that we're doing. If you want to participate, you can actually do so in the real world, or you can drink the brand and kind of subscribe through that modem. So it's, it's nothing that, you know, you wouldn't expect from music, to events, to parties, right? But we're owning that channel. And when you own it, 
the funny thing about doing things yourself is it tends to be cheaper. And so while we don't have the $8 million to send to Dave Portnoy and say, make us great, you know, my dollar actually goes further because I'm very good at what I do and I'm confident executing on my own. Excellent. Thanks, Lewis. Uh, Nick, what are your thoughts? Yeah, thanks, Troy. And uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, Real quick, why Reposado over using a Blanco that, you know, obviously would be probably cheaper. And then in terms of packaging, how's it packed for retail and where does it kind of sit on the shelf? Yeah, uh, Reposado smoother. And I wanted something that could blend for people who like tequila. My favorite tasting to do is someone who looks me straight in the eyes and says, I hate tequila. I'm like, perfect. This is the perfect example for me to test this. Um, and Reposado had that fit. With Añejo, you get a little bit too much of a smokiness, and that can turn people off. Blanco, you get the bite. I like it. Reposado fits the bill, and especially when you blend it with citrus fruits, you can actually mask it so people who like tequila can taste it a little bit. But for the people who don't necessarily like tequila, they're not put off by it like they would like a Blanco tequila soda you get at the bar. Uh, we're packed out in our inner packs, four packs, so it's six four packs to a case. Uh, it's all single skew four packs right now. We have intention in the future to do some sort of mix pack, but for now we're really focused on just penetration with these, these skews. We, we do recognize to your point though, that mix packs are the number one selling skew right now. I think before we get there, we want to get comfortable with what flavors we want to put there and whether we want to do exclusives et cetera, which we have the production capabilities to do. Awesome. Well, thanks, Nick. Thanks. Great question. Um, Catherine, from a retail perspective, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> well, first, I would like to say um, thank you for the presentation and thank you for the samples. Um, I thought it was really interesting that you chose peach, which is popular in beer, seltzer, ready to drink cocktails, and even wine. Peach is a tremendously popular flavor. Um, and usually it smells terrible, but yours was actually really delicious. Um, so congratulations on that. It was really good. <laughs> um, my question for you, though, is as you look at different distribution channels, are you considering e-commerce? And you, could you tell us a little bit about what it would take for you to get involved in that space? Yeah, for sure. Um, first and foremost, thank you. I'm, I'm glad it didn't go the other way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's real fruit juice. Um, here's the thing about e-com. Uh, it depends how you're routing the orders. So like one in the can space, it's expensive to ship. So if you have partners who like you, you go through like a Drizzly um, or like a GoPuff type mechanism where they have local kind of hubs that are delivering from, it's a much different kind of e-com play than ship directly from uh from the from the brand we do that now it's just expensive to ship those weights around the country and shipping those distances puts your product at risk so we have we have insurance for it but it doesn't always create the best consumer sentiment you know when you ship a case and then the fedex everyone sees how people how fedex treats your amazon packages and your 20 pound cases are treated no differently so when we think about e-com it's really about plugging into the right platforms, whether it's a large grocer, whether it's a GoPuff, whether it's a Drizzly. So you get that hub and spoke model. So you're not actually impacted by having to send a package from New York to California and hoping that the FedEx guy is not having a bad day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And thank you, Jeff. Thank you for kicking us off. And we're now on to our second competitor. We have Nate Duhon, the founder and CEO of Dewey Juice Cocktails. The Michigan native has lived in Chicago since 2012. Nate has extensive experience in beverage production and marketing strategy from his work as a regional distribution manager for an international Fortune 100 beverage company in the Chicago land market. In this role, he developed key relationships with Chicago-based liquor stores. As of last year, Nate's sole focus is growing the Dewey Juice Dewey Juice Cocktails brand. Welcome, Nate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How's everybody doing? My name is Nate Duhan. I'm the founder and CEO of Dewey Juice Cocktails. Uh, as mentioned, I have over a decade's worth of industry-related experience. I'm super excited to be able to tell, tell you about our brand today. 
Dewey juice is, it's convenience in a bottle. It's a 20 proof, non-carbonated rum-based cocktail with 100% real fruit juice and rum distilled from the Virgin Islands. There's a few things that I really would like to kind of point out that I feel that really separates us from um, other competitors. And the first would be our taste and flavors. This is not just your, you know, standard Mai Tai or Margarita or, you know, Mojito. There's a hundred other companies, other brands that are making those uh, flavor profiles. However, we have unique and proprietary uh, formulas such as our original tropical blend, which is an orange, mango, pineapple, rum punch, or our Dewey Blue, which is a blueberry lemonade rum punch. And soon to be released this summer, uh, we have a strawberry guava that's coming. Um, and what this does for us is creates a certain level of brand loyalty as well as customer retention um, because we have flavors that can't be easily found amongst other brands. The second thing would be convenience, right? Now more so than ever, people are looking for a convenient way to enjoy quality cocktails. And that's exactly what we got in a bottle for people to enjoy at their own leisure. Furthermore, um, it comes with a resealable cap for preserved consumption. Most other RTDs, once you open it, you better use it or you're going to lose it. The third thing I would say would be our versatility. Dewey juice is absolutely perfect over ice. I mean, absolutely perfect. Uh, but some people might use it as their chaser or even a mixer, right? And that's actually where we've seen a lot of success with our on-prem accounts, where they bring Dewey juice in as their base, and then they don't have to use as much of their hard spirit and they splashed on top and make a, a specialty curated cocktail that's only available at their location. Um, and then I actually throw in a fourth thing. The fourth thing I would say will, will be our story. Uh, Dewey Juice was, was created right here in this very kitchen I'm sitting in. Um, and I really wanted to make something that was universal. Something that was smooth enough for the lighthearted consumer, but packed enough punch for the cocktail enthusiast. And once I realized that, you know, I had a, a good demand amongst my family and friends. I said, okay, let me go ahead and figure out a way to commercialize this product so that I don't have to spend my weekends making something for you guys to get tipsy off of. Um, at that point, you know, I, I took the time, it took about two and a half years to commercialize it. And we officially launched in stores in May of 2022. By August of 2022, I was faced with an extremely tough decision. Uh, I was about three months away from having my, my firstborn child. And the, as he mentioned, you know, I was working for a Fortune 100 company. They pulled me in office. They say, you got 45 days to sell your business. Um, if you don't sell business, we're going to let you go. Uh, I know I made the right decision uh, by, by sticking to what my dream says. Um, and an opportunity like brand battle to compete on, on, the, on the main stage this April be exactly what the brand is looking for um, and be a great catalyst for the brand. Um, we have a suggested retail price of $6.99 in stores. We are in the Illinois market currently right now. Um, and we look to, to scale our business to Michigan, Georgia, and Texas um, before the end of the year. Excellent. Great job, Nate. Now let's bring it back to our panel of judges for some Q&A. First up, Simone, why don't you start off the questions? Great job, Nate, and a really interesting product. The flavors are delicious. And I would, uh, I'd venture to say that there's a, there's a fair amount of sugar in these drinks. Is that, is that? Uh... So not, not quite, uh, because one rum is already from sugar cane, right? So you have natural sweeteners there. We have a hundred percent real fruit juice. So you have natural sweeteners from there as well. Per serving, you have 16 grams of sugar per serving. Excellent. And what about uh, sizes? I know we're in a, we're looking at the 375. Have you tried? Uh, the same package in a 750? And are you looking at any other opportunities there? Good question. So our, our next plan of attack will go to uh, 200 mLs. Um, and we're going to go on a multi-pack. Uh, just from our research, especially from like, um, I look a lot at like the Nielsen reports. Last one that came out is saying that, you know, eight pack multi-pack is, is probably the, the best route to go as far as that. But that also gives us a good space, um, you know, in the grocery channel. So we do plan to go um, eight pack multi-pack but we'd be cans at that point. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Jenna, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so a lot of this is being done in the national accounts. Um, what is your plan and strategy to kind of attack those? You said a lot of this is being done in national accounts? So a lot of like ready to drink, um, this particular category is being done in the national accounts. So my, my question is, you know, how do you plan to attack that 
mm -hmm. um, with the competition that's currently out there? And do you have any plans and resources for it specifically? Yeah, so we actually have a company here uh, that's local that, that makes all of our POS um, for all of our accounts. And especially with our national accounts, we do have plans to have, you know, different racks, um, you know, rather static claims or whatever that account, you know, has, has the footprint for. Uh, we have the capabilities in-house to be able to make that for those accounts. Um, and from my, you know, experience, uh, my former company, I did that a lot, right? Um, I dealt with all the Marianos here in Chicago. I dealt with all the Walgreens, you know, and Targets uh, here in the Chicagoland area. Uh, so I already have a, a previous relationship with them. Um, and just excited to be able to step into that space with them with my own product now. Excellent. Thank you, Jenna. Brian, uh, what questions do you have for Nate? Yeah, I'd love to um, understand, Nate. I love the package and kind of the, the coloring. As you look to expand to other states and add different varieties, what, what do you do from a team basis to kind of go outside of what is your home market and uh, still to be successful? And also, for that matter, move into a canned good versus mm -hmm. see-through and glass where you can kind of see what's going on in the package. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to kind of backtrack a little bit, so I'm all the way clear, the, the, the glass will always be our single serve option, uh, but the can will be, you know, something that we offer on top of that. And we went to see, we went to the glass first because, you know, we didn't have millions of dollars to pour into uh, marketing advertisement up, up front just to throw another can on the shelf, right? So we want to be, have something that could jump out to, um, to the consumer. And so to answer your question, uh, the reason why I picked the markets that I selected in Michigan, Texas, and Georgia is because I have connections already there, and I already have boots on the ground in those markets that, re that are ready to go as soon as we uh, launch in those areas. Uh, I am originally from Michigan. Um, I've been in Chicago 10 years, um, you know, but I'm, I'm from Michigan. I have a, a super strong connection there, so that is our plan to go there first. Um, then um, the Texas and Georgia market will be thereafter. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nate. Appreciate everything. No problem. All right, next up, we will hear from two presenters, Marina Aglam and Tracy Cyber, founding partners of Naughty Life Wine. A seasoned marketer, Marina led Discovery Communications, 14 domestic-based TV networks, multiple digital media assets, and the US e-commerce division. <clears throat> Prior to joining Discovery, Aglam worked at several New York advertising agencies and developed brand campaigns for Vitamin Water and Equinox Fitness Clubs. Tracy Seibert leads sales and marketing initiatives for Naughty Crush, where she develops relationships with distribution partners, retailers, and consumers alike, resulting in nearly 100% sell through. She previously worked on a government contract for Hewlett Packard and as an operations manager at Computer Sciences Corporation and deployment manager at Electronic Data Systems. Welcome, Marina and Tracy. Thank you. Thanks, Troy. It's so great to be here today. I'm Tracy, and this is Marina, and we're founding partners of Naughty Life. Our brand premise is quite simple. We take people's favorite cocktails, and we reinvent them with wine instead of spirits. Naughty Crush is the first in what we hope to be a long line of flavors to come. A little bit of professional background on us, which I know you just mentioned. Um, we bring to the table years of experience in project management, marketing, and advertising. My background in project management provided me with a great deal of practice in problem solving, which served us well when developing a new product, which required tons of perseverance, breaking down barriers, and thinking outside of the box. And I've worked in advertising and marketing for 25 years and um, really digging deep to the core of a consumer insight is what gets me going and figuring out how a brand can add value to that consumer's lives. I think when a brand fills a void or enhances a consumer's lives, that's when it really is unstoppable. So that's what we tried to do when we approached Naughty Life. So when you look at the competitive landscape and the consumer behavior that's happening in the adult beverage space, Naughty Life was born from a kind of convergence of about three, probably even more, but probably three main opportunities. Um, first, we know that um, next to beer, wine is still the preferred drink of most people who drink alcohol. And there are very few creative wine options out there to keep the industry fresh and innovative and bringing in a younger demographic. So we think there's a ton of room for more innovation in the wine space. Um, secondly, we know people love a good cocktail. And um, we know that during COVID, everybody wanted to be like Troy and they you know, fancied themselves a mixologist. 
And um, in our area, Crush is a really popular regional cocktail made with fresh orange juice and uh, grapefruit juice, and uh, uh, and it's a vodka-based drink. But um, we thought there was a way to make that complicated kind of either bar call or at home drink very easy for on the go. Um, and then lastly, you know, coming out of COVID, you know, we're, we know that a lot of consumers believe that wine is a healthier option compared to spirits. And I know we have a lot of spirits people on this panel, so no, no offense. Um, but with a slightly lower ABV than the typical um, uh, spirit uh, cocktail, we think we can capitalize on that trend of kind of healthy habits post COVID. So kind of like in a nutshell, if you kind of roll that up, we know people prefer wine as a choice. Um, they love a good cocktail and we think we're spot on from that trend perspective. Not to mention it's a great drink. So. And how do we know it's a great <laughs> drink? Um, most importantly, because the consumers have been telling us so. The ultimate vote for a product is when the register rings and we've been continually selling out in stores. Our first cans hit the stores last summer in July in Maryland. And we are currently scheduling our fourth canning run as our distributors continually selling out, even in the winter months. Um, we've also spent a lot of time listening to our consumers. We did countless focus groups and tastings when we were developing the flavor profile. And so it wasn't a surprise to us that they, the consumers love the taste and the fact that it's made from all natural ingredients. We have just four ingredients, the wine, um, grapefruit puree, orange, extract and just a few grams of natural cane sugar. Um, and then we also even dialed in on the perfect bubble size. We gave our consumers the effervescence they wanted, but we made it with ultra refined bubbles. So you don't get the gas or bloat that you often get in seltzers. So, so much thought went into our product design and development and it was all driven by consumer feedback. Yeah, so taking that consumer feedback, developing the product, now we look at kind of how we sit against the competitors in the market. And we think we sit in a really unique place between this canned spirits cocktail and the canned wine category. And, you know, when, you know, against the traditional spirit-based RTD cocktail, we're obviously different because we're made with wine um, versus the spirit. So that's a huge differentiator. And typically that has, it comes with a lower ABV, like I said before. And then when you compare it to canned wines, um, which is usually either just wine or a spritz of some sort, um, we do tend to have a lower ABV, but we still get a six ounce um, glass of wine in each can because we're serving in 12 ounce sleeks. Um, and yeah. 30 seconds wrap up. Sorry. 30 seconds wrap up. Oh, sorry. And it's just because we sit in the middle of these two categories, we think we have uh, a great opportunity to kind of steal share from both of those groups, the R2D cocktails and canned wine. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, we were just gonna mention on premise, we see another big opportunity here. Um, here, the canned cocktails already made for you. So just open and pour over ice. Um, and so we, we feel like we have a great product here. Um, we are poised to steal the market share from multiple categories, grow the brand with more flavors and um, expand our footprint. So we're thrilled to be here and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great job, Marina and Tracy. Now let's bring back our panel of judges for some Q&A. Lewis, why don't you start us off this time? Sure, happy to, and uh, uh, congratulations. I think you guys have done a nice job on the packaging, and I think the, the product utility uh, uh, positioning is certainly there. Uh, tell us about your sales per point of distribution with key customers and any key chain accounts or big customers who've given you uh, some sort of commitments. Yeah, so we are um, we are distributed currently in two states, Maryland, which is where we are based outside of Annapolis, and then in North Carolina, we have a small distributor there. Um, we are in, um, I would say, in, in our area, probably about 60 stores in the kind of uh, greater Annapolis, kind of out to the, you know, like kind of the water, the water area, the watershed areas of Maryland. Um, and then we just signed, uh, probably, I think we just shipped them to a couple hundred cases a month ago in North Carolina to uh, a company called Three Keys Distributing, who has some relationship with some regional Whole Foods in North Carolina. So here in Maryland, we're very liquor store based. We've just broken into some um, on-premise accounts, which is why the bartenders have been kind of like saying, hey, thanks for making my life a little easier. Um, but we, you know, we're at, the, we're at the start of this journey, given that it, you know, is in the summer, but, um, but the footprint is growing very fast and we're, we're excited to keep up with the demand. 
Excellent. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, Catherine, what are your thoughts? Hello. Um, thank you for the presentation. It was very nice. Um, and congratulations on everything you've accomplished. Um, so I do agree with you that any convenience packaging is very popular, especially in the summertime. Uh, we do see a little bit of seasonal fall off with that type of product and also with seltzers. When the weather turns cold, people um, look for um, fuller bodied beverages, I would say. Um, so it's really important to keep the message out all year round. So I do wanna know if you were to go into retail, which is my space, uh, how would you support it with social media, digital strategy, POS, in-store tastings, et cetera? And also, what is the retail? How does it sit on the shelf? So uh, from a price perspective, it sits in the $14.99 to $16.99 for a four pack. Um, uh, and from a positioning standpoint where it sits on the shelf, it's, it's great when we walk into, and mainly liquor stores right now, we're not in grocery um, or big box yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll work with the, um, we'll work with displays in terms of the to-go. So in the can, obviously any kind of pouch, you know, any kind of utility, easy grab and go, but we're also in the wine section. We're also in the refrigerated section. So you, you kind of kind of find, you can find us in multiple places in the store. Um, I think your question was also around um, uh, how we can increase or, or what our presence would look like. I think the one thing that we love about this brand is the kind of wink that goes around with Naughty, and we've had so much fun with Naughty and Nice. So with some of our with our some of our uh, retailers here, we've done in store promotions. Um, obviously, signage. We have posters. We've done you know table cards. We've done shelf talkers. All of those things, but we really try to play with the brand. So for Halloween, um, we did a you, You've Been Boozed promotion where people could kind of pick up hang tags. It's a big thing in this area of instead of, you know, knocking on doors and leaving candy for kids, people will leave a bottle of wine or now a Naughty Crush or You've Been Naughty or Nice was a Halloween promotion we did and we gave collateral to our retailers that they could give at checkout. So we really try to surround themselves, surround it with not just a kind of push to sell, but also just kind of an embracing of the brand and the, the wink around it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Catherine, uh, for that question. Um, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Ryan. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, love what y'all are doing here. Um, would love to kind of, I guess, understand as you move from retail to kind of Catherine's market on the grocery side of things, what are you, what are you going to do to kind of get that velocity on the shelf? What, what will you do to stand out? I mean, it has the name Naughty Crush, obviously it's larger, but kind of what, what do you see yourself doing or as a brand doing to really kind of get that attraction? Uh, well, I think our graphics are really bold and stand out. And, you know, I, I think when we've done our kind of comparative shopping in store of what other people are doing, even just uh, creative displays and units or things like that, that a retailer would allow us to come in and do. Um, and I would also say, you know, being, you know, on the early side of this journey, we, we want to be the best out there. We want to partner with a retailer who says, this is what my customers love. This is what I need. So who am I to walk into a Kroger and tell you what your customers, how they want to be presented. So, but we want to build to that. Um, I think that, you know, one thing that people settled out Trace is just our, our collaboration and our, you know, we believe very much in this brand. And when we partner with somebody, we want it to be a win-win. So um, I would say we are very flexible, very motivated and, um, and very creative. So right. I, we're confident we can, partner in a big right. way. And one thing to mention, I think um, one of the big reasons we're not in any big grocery stores is in Maryland, you cannot sell alcohol in grocery stores. So that's why we're all in the in the liquor stores in Maryland. But um, but like as Marina said, the the display, we've gotten such great feedback on the packaging. I mean, so many people have told us they just bought it because of the way it, that it looks. So um, and then they love the taste, which was which followed, which was great, but, um, but yes, we're. And more flavors to come. We're working on our margarita right now. Hopefully in the next month, we'll have it in a can. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's all we have time for. Uh, Marina and Tracy, thank you for everything. Thank you for your presentation. We are halfway through our brands who are presenting today. I hope you're all enjoying hearing from them and the feedback from our judges. Next up, we have another dynamic duo, Jared Carter and Javaris Little representing the Red Lady Rum Punch Can Cocktail. Javaris is a football player turned entrepreneur who began his entrepreneurial journey while pursuing his MBA in international business. J 
Jared has over 16 years of entrepreneurial and managerial experience, including designing and printing clothing, selling consumables, party planning, and door-to-door -door sales. He serves as a spiritual mentor for youth ages 13 to 18 and coaches others on keeping commitments and reaching goals as accountability partner. Jared and Javaris, let's hear from you. Yes, yes, happy to be here. Happy to be here and let's get right into it. So I have a background in party planning and then that is exactly where the Red Lady started. So I um, used to throw parties up in Notre Dame, me and my best friend. One night we just go, let's throw a huge party. I uh, have no idea how this is going to happen, but we just go for it. I go in the kitchen and I, looking back, I was an unofficial mixologist before I even knew what the term was. Uh, created the Red Lady. We made 15 gallons of it, partied from 10 o'clock at night, six o'clock in the morning. I was able to pay two months rent. And my buddy looked at me that after that night and he was like, you have something. So I came back home to Florida. I started working the circuit, um, doing events and and really just realized that I needed someone else. Um, eventually prayed and, and was able to find somebody within my circle. My best friend introduced me to Javaris and uh, here we are. So his best friend, my mentor was at the time, uh, we was having dinner and Jared was discussing to me what the red lady was. Uh, then it was in the bottle. Um, I was studying my MBA in international business and I told him I can't help him, you know, kind of move this product uh, not only um, within the city that we were in, but also nationally and internationally as well with my uh, background in international business. So, uh, so from there, um, I mentioned to him in 2018, 2019 that, hey, we are already at RTD in a bottle. Let's, you know, try to make the transition in the cans. Uh, then we didn't have any resources. It wasn't until 2021 that uh, we, uh, we signed on with an AB wholesaler in our region. Uh, and he introduced us to uh, a, a supplier that can do the production for us with the cans. So we have here the Red Lady Can Cocktail, 5.9%, made with real rum um, and natural flavors. Um, it's lightly carbonated, but we want to make sure that uh, the audience know that this is not another seltzer in the market. Um, and with that, <clears throat> we have the, the, the exterior, which is a matte red with the spot gloss. So, you know, it kind of like uh, a combination of our our slogan, a blend of elegance, mixing the interior with the exterior. Uh, with this, we want to focus on the community of building uh, of people that uh, people that are interested in trying new drinks. Uh, so with that, we wanted to broaden and expand our target market, trying to focus on festivals, uh, the social gatherers, the young professionals. And within, with that, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that we target them on our radar. Yeah, so ultimately, uh, for my roots, I have a Caribbean influence. And so I noticed that at an early age, even making the rum punch coming out the gate, that the Caribbean community, to me, is underserved within this space. And so we are in Florida. We were deemed Tampa Bay's rum punch. Uh, we, we covered the entire state of Florida with a heavy emphasis in West Central Florida. And then we're also distributed throughout the entire state of Georgia through Savannah. Uh, we do online shipping through one of our retailers to 40 states. And... We really pride ourselves, as Javaris mentioned, on really drinking with elegance. It is called the Red Lady. And so we want to we want to convey to our consumers that no matter what you do, you know, treat it like a lady, even though it is a rum punch. We've seen it in multi, we've seen it in a myriad of different um, arenas, uh, social gatherings, like I said, weddings. And, and pizzerias and gas stations. And really the, the, the transition from the 20% bottles to the 5.9 allowed us to expand in the state of Florida uh, to get in some of those, those places in which we weren't able to increase in visibility and, and increase in our footprint. Overall, um, like I said, we pride ourselves in the locality. Everything is made in Florida. And we our main goal is to make the term rum punch synonymous with the Ray Lady. And so, Excellent. Uh, yes, there you go. Thank you, Jared and Javaris. Now let's bring back our panel of judges for some Q&A. Simone, why don't you kick us off with uh, the first round of questions? Might be having some technical difficulties. We're gonna- go. Thank you, Jared and Javaris, I appreciate that. Uh, great job on the presentation and, and great job on the product. Can you tell me uh, what is your price point currently? What are you selling for on the shelf? And a little bit about uh, your 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 mix. You said you mentioned a lot of uh, you went back and forth between restaurant and retail. Can you tell me uh, a little bit about where that percentage is? How much is going through restaurants? How much is going through retail? 
Okay, so uh, for retails and stores, it varies between uh, 1099 to 1399, depends on the variety of, of cases that a retailer uh, serve or purchase. Um, and then you want to cover it uh, on premise? Yeah, and you said, what was the what was the last question? Simone? Well, I was, I was looking for price, and then I was also looking for uh, the volume of sales. How much of your current volume is going through restaurants and bars? How much of it is going through retail for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 like 70-30 right now. We're mostly on-premise, uh, off-premise, I'm sorry. 70% off-premise, 30% on-premise. Really working on um, getting those on-premise accounts. Again, we started with a bottle. So, which is still in the market, right? And our bottles do very well on premise because you can have it straight out the bottle and mix it with other uh, spirits. But the cans just coming out literally two and a half months ago are, are really off premise. Excellent, great questions. Uh, how about you, Jenna, what are your thoughts? Hey guys, it's nice to meet you. Um, and thanks again for the presentation. But I have a question about mostly your uh, your social strategy. I know a lot of these brands are kind of created with awareness online and things like that. Um, and looking at your uh, website and your Instagram, do you have any plans to attract more customers of the awareness of the brand in this region using any uh, social or uh, digital uh, components? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so obviously we wanted to, you know, broaden and expand our target market. So being able to attract the, the young socialites uh, lifestylists in order to uh, be able to have that footprint um, with the with the cans as well um, is one of our main strategy um, and then also doing a f a different festivals and events and things like that. Yeah so actionable items would be partnering with um, organizations that are already the color red because uh, it's obviously prominent. Uh, we've also we've done a couple events with uh, a big sorority the Deltas here and then there are just a ton of um, uh beach brands as well so that fit very well with our target market so we've spoken to a lot of them just had a, a, a past weekend and we're able to connect with three of them so that's an easy sell for us so a lot of our accounts take place within the beach setting or just the nightlife and so that that is our strategy for expansion excellent thank you uh nick i want to throw over to you now see if you have any questions for jared and javars yeah, thanks, Troy, and thanks, Javaris and Jared. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned that you're selling online to about 40 states, but in the markets that you're currently distributed in, um, what are some of the successes that you've seen at retail and on-premise a little bit, and then any plans to expand out uh, new flavors and new SKUs? Yeah, so we've seen success that the store that, that actually ships to the rest of the United States does very well, um, and... Uh, some of the big ones here are just, we're, we're heavy in Tampa Bay and literally in our city, we're in St. Petersburg, there are 80 breweries. So we do a lot of these festivals with seltzers and beers where we just stand out. We just did one last weekend and you just see the packaging and it's pretty much either clear or white. And then you come to the end of it and you see a red can. And so uh, the packaging really just kind of, you know, grabs the people's attention. And then as far as flavors go, we have developed other flavors with other spirits, uh, a tequila, a vodka, but we're really just focusing on the rum punch. We think that we can move faster with it because like I said, I discovered early on when making the Red Lady that I feel like the Caribbean community doesn't really associate with RTDs. Um, and we have actually had difficulty finding other rum punches. The only one that we could think of is Bacardi. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Jared Javaris, we wanna thank you for your presentation. And now on to our fifth and final contender. Rebecca Morgan presenting Agua Dulce Ranch Water. Rebecca joined MexCor in 2014, where she is involved with managing brands and marketing efforts, both on and off premise. She has an advertising background and was part of the team that launched the San Antonio Scorpions FC, a professional soccer club. Thanks for being here, Rebecca. Hi team, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we're excited to be here representing our new ranch water, uh, Agua Dulce Ranch Water. Um, so a little bit of background. We are, we live in Texas, we're from Texas. Um, and if you don't know, ranch water was actually created in Texas um, about in, in the early beginning of the century in a little hotel out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so it's a pretty common drink out here. Um, we're pretty passionate about it. And all of the ranch waters on the market we just couldn't find a profile we enjoyed. Um, so we said, why not produce one of our own? Um, 
On top of that, we have very close ties to the tequila community. Um, so our founder and owner is, his mother owns a tequila distillery down in Mexico. It's a female owned distillery. Um, it is also the most awarded tequila distillery in Mexico. Um, it's something we're very proud of and they really, really do produce excellent tequilas. Um, so we just felt that that would be the perfect fit for us to, you know, bring a ranch water to life that not only tastes great, is made with all natural flavors, um, is gluten-free, um, but that we enjoy because we're Mexicans, but enjoy tequila and we enjoy ranch water. Um, so we brought something to life that is bright on the shelf. As you can see behind me, it's very eye-catching. Um, it tastes great and it retails for about $12.99. Um, so we really think we can catch that key demographic um, that's just rushing into the store to try something new. Um, we, it doesn't have any additives um, and it's very, very sippable, easy to drink over ice. Um, and that's basically it. Excellent. Thanks, Rebecca. Now let's bring back our panel of judges for some Q and A. Lewis, uh, let's start with you. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm. I'm in. I'm in Dallas, so uh, highly familiar familiar with ranch water. Uh, our, our retailers are actually uh, decreasing the number of ranch waters that they're, they're carrying in their stores right now. So, given that it's Mexico, I assume you guys have already been uh, uh, beating the doors, beating the doors on on chains, and are getting uh, chain commitments. So we're actually launching it about this month, next month. Um, so we we have gotten a little bit, um, our main target is really gonna be trying to get these into some of the liquor chains, um, being that it is tequila based. So it's a little bit different from the other ones that are on the market right now. The other main ones are mostly um, malt based um, and are going into grocery. So we're trying to compete on a little bit of a different scale with these. Thank you, Lewis, for the question. Jenna, do you have any questions for Rebecca? I do. Hi, Rebecca. Um, quick question. You mentioned being in Texas first and foremost. What are your plans on um, expansion in the next two to three to five months and then this year? Sure. So as I mentioned, we really haven't kicked these off fully yet. Um, we are planning to do so in this month and next month. Um, Liquid to Lips is our number one go-to thing. Um, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of tastings. Um, and just getting everyone to try it because honestly, that's, that's the key difference. Um, when we were developing this product, we tasted it against every single product on the market. And until we were happy with it, we didn't can it. Okay. Uh, Ryan, uh, we'd like to open it up to you for any questions for Rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca, um, like the colors and brightness of it. Um, we were talking earlier with Nielsen data and some other things with other brands of how it's important to have the variety pack and also kind of more than two flavors since a variety pack. Um, where do you see, I mean, obviously you're starting off with two SKUs and going after four packs. Where do you see the opportunity to kind of expand from there and get to the variety? Sure. So we actually have six SKUs right now. Um, we have a strawberry, a spicy pineapple, a mango, a grapefruit, a lime, and a spicy cucumber, which is my personal favorite, let me just say. Um, we are looking at doing a variety pack. We wanted to kind of launch with all of these and see which flavors perform the best first and then roll out a variety pack in the three best performing flavors. Got it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. I'd like to thank all of our competitors and judges. And now we will send our judges to do the difficult task of deliberating on this category winner of who will move on to the championship round live on stage at Access Live on April 3rd in Orlando, Florida. While our judges are deliberating, we're going to share some important and relevant category information from our partners at SibSource. Details about Access Craft and Access Live. So don't go anywhere.
Aloha, everyone. We're excited for you to join us at the WSWA's Access Live in Orlando this April and to celebrate the wine and spirits industry. We hope you'll join me and Blaine in April. We're excited to launch our handcrafted vodka melee, a sustainable brand built with our planet in mind and made of the purest natural ingredients from Montana. Okay, aloha. See you soon. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you got some great information as our judges were determining today's winner of the RTD Hard Seltzer Brand Battle Tournament of who will proceed to the Brand Battle Championship in Orlando, live on stage at Access Live. Today's RTD Hard Seltzer category winner, let's get a little drum roll, please, is Tigo. Excellent. A big congratulations to you on your win. Your award will be mailed to you in the next few weeks. I would like to thank all of our contenders who have participated today. Tigo, someone from WSWA will be contacting you later today to discuss next steps. We look forward to seeing you all at our next tournament this Thursday, February 23rd at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the wine tournament. Thank you to our Brand Battle Tournament title sponsor, the Acceleration Group. Congratulations, everyone, and see you all at Access Live.